Hello everybody, we are back again for another episode of Extricated. I am KB and with me is my trusty sidekick, DDB. Hey Jesus, this guy, this guy yeah. called me his sidekick. Can you see, just, <laughs> hey, just because he's introducing, <laughs> he's introducing today, he's now making me his sidekick. Okay, fine, I'll accept it. Hello guys, hi, hi, how are you, how is everyone doing? Hope you're enjoying oh, the weekend. Good. I'm, good. Doing, I'm doing good, I'm doing good, KB. Oh, are you trying to, de- are you trying to deny that I'm my sidekick? Uh, <laughs> For today, for today, yes, I will agree, but no, you're not. You know, I roasted you in the last in our Twitter space, remember? You did not. Ah, well, speaking, did. Of which, ah. speaking of which, I'd like, to thank, <laughs> I'd like to thank everybody who turned up for our Twitter space um, last last week Sunday. And we were happy to see that there was a decent turnout. And we also saw that a good number of people listened to the episode prior to that. And we are really appreciative of that Thank so you um <laughs> yeah david was david was, david was particularly excited when wow. when he saw that <laughs> <laughs> uh, um today we are going to talk about um the economic machine uh before we start i would like to first of all talk about what economics is you know and how it ties to economy economics and economy are not the same thing if you have, if you actually think about it or if you actually sit down to study it they're not the same thing economics we're talking about a study of people and choices basically that's the simplest way to put it um i i remembered something i remember something um i learned some years ago it, it was from one of the the goods of economics um alfred marshall he uh, i'm sorry i might paraphrase a little bit in case you are <laughs> in case you know the quotes um by heart um but he said that study of um, economics is the study of man in the ordinary business of life and economics asks questions about how man gets his income and how he uses it so Basically, like I said, it's just man and choices, people and choices. Economics is not a study of um, how to make money or how to get rich, like some people think. Knowing economics, <laughs> knowing economics is not going to get you rich. But yeah, it can give you, it can make, it can help you make informed informed decisions on how you can make money and stuff like that. Um, on the other hand, economy talks about. Um, how resources are distributed in the society how money moves around who spends money who gets money stuff like that just movement of money basically um but going back to economics i want to um say uh, a, just tell us a little a little story you know so you know most people most people think that um economics is you know something that is that doesn't affect the common man you know just when you think about economics or economy the first thing that comes to your mind is government you know the when you say economy is bad or the economics of so 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 you understand the economics of um the market this and that people always think people always think oh the government the government but in our everyday life economics applies it applies, like I said, it consists of choices, decisions you make. I'll give you an example. Let's say you are a data analyst, you're just like starting out, you're a freelance data analyst, and you use your computer to work, for example. And let's say your computer goes bad and you're just like you're just trying to manage it to make sure that okay you can still do your but you are no you're not as productive as you would wish. So you have some money down, let's say you have about four hundred dollars down you know you say okay i could buy another laptop with this money but then you're also a very big fan of boner boy and you see that his concert is coming up and to get very good you know tickets you you're going to you're going to have to spend probably that amount of money that you have that you could use to buy a laptop to you know buy tickets for that concert and 
you now decide to sit down and think, do I want to go for Bonner Boys concerts now and at the expense of my productivity? Because let's say maybe that money that you have might be the only um, um, reasonable amount of money that you can ha- you, you currently have. So you you might think of investing it or you want to, you know, just have some fun at the concerts. And uh, so making that choice, the choice that you are now um, you now decide to make. Okay, let's let's say you go for the concerts, for example. You've made a choice, but that choice has come at a cost. And that cost is what we refer to as opportunity cost in economics. It's, it, that's the whole concept of opportunity cost. That's the cost of the alternative that you've forgone. So you've you've for, you've uh, you've decided to forego your um, your new laptop to you know go and have fun at a concert. You understand? So it's it's also it applies at the big at the big stage too. As it applies at the little stage, at the, at the personal level, it also applies at the big stage when it comes to like the government level. The government can decide oh. Do we want to spend on the military at the expense of education and healthcare? You understand? If you want to, if you want to spend more money to defend our country, we may not have enough money to spend on education. We may not have more money to fund healthcare. You understand? So all those things have to do with choices. So now that's now that we've, we've cleared economics, we can come back to the economy. Um, the economy. I like to we like like this title suggests it's a machine. We like to think of it as a machine. And when you see a machine, you you think of something super complex. Like when you think about your car or your refrigerator or what have you, any any kind of machine that you know, you look at it as something very complex. But the moment you take up take out let's say the car, for example, you take out um, the engine. You open the engine and you also like take out the parts that make it work you can look at a single part and like oh i understand how this works so this is how this contributes to the working of my car you understand so when you are able to break down break down a machine when you are able to break down the components of a machine to understand how each component works you begin to understand it better and the simplest component of economy is transaction yeah. Transaction, simplest form of economy, and without you know the, the exchange of goods, exchange of goods for money, or money for goods, you cannot have an economy at large. So we are going to talk about transactions now and how they how they affect the economy. Well, so well, well, I like my colleague. Right. <laughs> <Your colleague, you're... laughs> <laughs> Anyway, right, like the economy, right, is is it is complex, right? Just like a car can be complex, just like a motorcycle can be, a bike can be compl- complex, right? But it's simple, right? It just made up, it's made up of different parts, few simple parts, and a lot, a lot of transactions that are re- repeated over and over and over again, right? And <clears throat> now. These transactions, right, are driven by our human nature, right? As human beings, we have this nature of buying and selling, right? And then these transactions, as we're going to see, they create three main forces that drive the economy in general, right? Now, the economic machine, right, it's based on transactions, right? But then it drives, this transaction drives three things that are very very important we're not going to talk about these three things but we have to we're going to talk about um other simple part we're going to talk about transactions first and then in another part we're going to talk about these three things which are productivity growth short-term debt cycle and long-term debt cycle now transactions back to transactions again transactions this is like that simplest part of the economy right anytime you buy something you create a transaction it's as simple as that right someone um, when you buy something someone uh, you give someone money and then they give you um, that particular good right that is a transaction it's as simple as that right we have the buyer and we have the seller now the buyer exchanges money or credit we're going to talk about credit later credit it's very very important in the economic machine very very important it's actually the most important because there's a lot of reasons we're going to talk to you about that later in this episode so um the buyer exchanges money or credit 
right for goods services and financial assets financial assets can be um a land can be a house can be anything that brings you money you get this can know. be crypto holdings uh, yes exactly mm-hmm. it can be crypto holdings, can be stocks right so um yeah. you understand so you you spend money just like you spend credit we explain how that works right so in total right money spent added to credit spend is equals to the total spending in the economy right now total amount of spending i'll take this carefully now right total amount of spending drives the economy now how is that yeah. because transaction is building block of the economy and guess what now a market right market is all the transactions happening for the same thing for example um kb you talked you, you talked about um, um uh, someone exchanging you talked about opportunity cost someone going to bonar boys concert right so imagine um someone buys a ticket and exchange like the person gives the money gets the ticket for that particular um event so that is a market on its own right there's a market for events right there's a market for cars there's a market for wheat there's a market for gold there's a market for yeah. laptops there's a market for there's basically textile yes exactly textile every single thing right everything. Now, what have you just think about it. anything that you can buy there's a market for it somewhere yeah, exactly so if, if you look at it there, there are steps right it starts from transaction buying and selling of a particular thing right so if you buy and sell one thing like one set of things you can buy a laptop sell it that's a market for laptop right so now there are different markets right so there are the different markets that we have this is more than a thousand markets because there are goods and services there's a good for mouse there's a good for pen so there's a market for pen there's a market for mouse there's a market for laptop there's a market for phones right so now every each market now which is transaction right mixed together they form the economy right they form the economic machine that is that is simply an economy right so you can just simply say it's economy an economy consists of all the transactions in all of its market so nigeria has its own economy so nigeria's economy consists of all the transaction in all of its markets right the buying and selling that happens in each market right that forms an economy the nigerian economy us has their economy everything right so uh, we have people businesses banks government they all engage in transactions like we explained and the biggest buyers and sellers is the government and they consist of two parts yes just like you said you know transaction involves a lot of buying and selling and the biggest buyers and sellers are the government exactly so governments consist of two parts understand um this the government you know, we talk about the central government as the person let's say the president or the presidency for example the president and his cabinet and those people working in the executive in his executive council to make sure that oh this is how we're running this country that th- those are the people in the central government then we have the central bank central bank is also an extension of the government even though technically it's, it's, it's meant to be a bank. But this, the, um, this, the central government is basically involved in like, you know, collecting taxes. You know, you have the, you have the um, sections, the departments uh, that are responsible, departments and agencies that are responsible for revenue, collecting taxes, you know, then also um, handling all, all, um, all, the, all the products, basically of the nation's economy say for example oil now you know let's say the the major the major um income the major source of income for the country is oil so we have um the people who handle its um revenue and then also decide on how that revenue is spent on, exactly. on what aspects of the country it is spent or what sector it spent, you know that is what the government does the central government does as for the central bank it basically controls the amount of money and credits in the economy 
um, they basically influ they influence interest rates when it comes to credits they influence interest rates you know they, they they can they set the standard okay this is the minimum interest rates when you are talking about mortgages you understand if you want to if you want to get loans to buy a house you know this is the minimum this is the this is the minimum rates you can go for um for for, for interest basically for get for a loan to buy a house and stuff like that so they dictate what the interest rates will be like they might they can influence it and also they are involved in um printing money now printing money it affects the supply of money in the country you understand if they are printing money they are pumping money into the into the system basically there's more money there's more money for spending and um you know every, the buying power basically increases let me put it that way yes. if they, if they don't do that then you know there is um what is it called the, the, this this the buying power the buying power reduces you understand but you know yeah, so yeah. another another major player is they are the, um, they are the lenders now when you talk about credits the, the yes. actual lenders yeah people who are interested in giving the money they are it's a business basically for them you know you have um somebody saying oh i'm i'm going to borrow your money but then when you're giving me the money back you're going to give me back the money i gave you which is known as the principal right and then you are going to give me a little something on top, you know, for <laughs> let, let me like, say for it's, goodwill. <laughs> it's like what it's like what we normally do now, right? When we're having even if like we're having normal transactions with anybody, right? Um, if somebody borrows money from us, and uh, most of us, some of us actually ask, uh, give, uh, tell the person to give us this money by this particular period of time, or we even ask the person say, um, what time? When are you going to give me back my money? right and some will even go as far as okay fine um i'm giving you this money how much am i going to get on top right so that money yeah. that, that that money that that person gave is the principal and then the interest rate is basically the uh, money on top that you're adding when you're giving the person back yeah. his or her money uh, yes exactly and one thing about interest rates like for example now ddb if i come to you and say um i want you to borrow me money yeah, I want you to lend me money. I think that's the correct English. <laughs> I want you to lend me money, and I and I want and and I and I say okay, this I want I want I want one hundred and fifty thousand naira from you, and you say okay. But do you know what? Like, the first the first thing I will ask as a as, as a lender, right? The first thing I will ask, I'll, I'll look at you first. You don't even I'll look at you first. What's your profile? Who are you? You understand exactly like, are you worthy exactly. are you worthy of the money do you have are you uh, yes are you credit worthy do you have yeah. something that even if yeah. you don't pay at this particular time i can i can use to i can sue you and then you can pay using that asset that financial asset that you have to pay me or maybe exactly. stock. you understand exactly. uh -huh. so mm. if, if you have that credit if you have um if you make income people that's like, credit worthiness. yeah that's credit credit worthiness right people so, give money to who has money they don't give you, money to yes yes money. yes yeah, yeah. Let I, us, I i know what you're trying to say because i have a friend that usually says that yes <laughs> let, let, let us actually give money to those who make money if you don't make money they will not give you money so if kb comes to me and says he wants one hundred and fifty thousand naira, i'll say okay fine does this guy even make the money can he even you know his, does he even have you, you know you know, that, you know that is also how venture capitalism works too you know if if you are if you're not looking at least promising enough you understand if your if your business or your startup rather is not looking like it is going to be profitable why on earth am i going to invest in it exactly you understand it's similar um okay the point i was even trying to make you know about this thing i was trying to talk about interest rates yes. um if i come to you and i say give me 150,000 naira and you now come and you now come and you tell me that okay i'm giving you 150,000 naira but you are going to pay me 200,000 naira back i'm like wow that's too high you understand if i want if i want a loan of 150,000 i'll be like oh okay maybe i will be i will be more willing to pay as an interest, ten thousand naira on top. So I'll more to give you like maybe more than sixty thousand naira, for example. But you are telling me that I should pay two hundred thousand naira. I am not going to be interested in getting that loan because I know yes. that I know that it is now it is it is too expensive. So when interest rates are high, 
you understand collecting credits becomes more expensive and borrowing reduces because why on earth would you want to put yourself in such a situation you understand so except you know your except maybe for people who are in emergencies and and really um the point the, the major point of credit is to make is, is to produce something later on but you know most times people take credit to buy things that they can't afford you know especially when you think about houses and cars and stuff like that it's more common here more common here we use, more commonly here you see it in the but case not, of um, it's, but it's, not in most, it's not just it's not just in most cases so in in all in all cases right whenever someone wants to borrow money it's because he or she cannot afford that money to Actually, buy, to buy yes. that yeah. thing. that's why the person goes and even, even if you are yeah even if you are using it to develop a business it's because yes. you you do not have you money have to develop money. A directly yeah i agree with that i agree with that yes, yes. so you understand so if if um if the interest rates are too high i would not i would no longer be interested in in borrowing i am like okay now i am making the choice i'm like okay no i'm choosing not to do this because i do not want the effects of this in the future i might not be able to handle it you understand i might not be able to handle the very high interest rates and you know how um interest rates uh, interest rates work if if you if you are you know when loans when, when you talk about loans or credits you have um remember mathematics in school you know you have principal you have interest rates and you have time that's also another important aspect so you have um you have a time period in which you are meant to pay your loan back yeah. if you're not if you're not if you're not able to pay back your pay your debts off within that particular time you're going to incur even more debt because you are now having you're not going to have to incur um additions uh, additional additional fees like i don't know maybe they call them lateness fees or sometimes maybe it's just additional interest on top and stuff like that so you are you are going to end up spending more so if you're unable to if you think you're not going to be um if you're not going to be able to pay on time you either look for a different source of credits or you may decide not to even take the credit at all and that is a choice and that is economics you understand so you yeah. see how economics and economy tie <laughs> tie in now you know you see that you see that um transactions and credits they actually drive the economy but then you know in the end the individual choices that's the economics of the whole thing also ties in you understand um yeah something i also wanted to add right i also wanted to mm -hmm. add the fact that now at the end of the day right um just like buyers and sellers right create transactions so does lenders mm -hmm. and borrowers you get so yes the transaction is basically lenders usually want to make more money from the money that they have right they'll just yes. want to invest and get more money because that's why the interest rate is there and then we have borrowers yeah. usually they want to buy what they can't afford as we mentioned e.g either house a car equipment or maybe mm -hmm. they want to start a business as kb mentioned earlier right now when mm -hmm. borrowers promise to repay and lenders believe them credit mm -hmm. is now created yes exactly yes, now, and when credit, credit enters the hands yeah, of exactly. the borrower yes it, it becomes, becomes what it is it you understand debt. exactly <laughs> now any two any two people can agree to create credit out of thin air like any two people like right and guess what debt is an asset to the lender because as i'm lending you money i'm making there is a way that i have to get that money back because it's going to be legally binded um it's going to be based on loan and all that right and there's a time period as kb mentioned right it's going to be an asset mm -hmm. to the lender because it's more money i gave you money and i'm going to get more money right and it's also yeah. a liability for the borrower because you're buying something that you cannot afford so it's a liability to you right depends mm -hmm. on what you do for it. if you do if you if you maybe buy something that is good that is an asset and then you're making money from it that thing that you bought now becomes uh what is it called um it now becomes an asset to you right till when you come out it's still that credit that debt is still a liability to you as long as you've not paid it even if you bought an asset with it you, it's still a debt 
right? And that I think might even end up becoming a collateral too, because yes, exactly, you are, if you end up in a situation where you are unable to pay off that, you know, that debt, yes. you know, you can you can now say, oh, okay, this is. I mean, it's 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 quite. It's something that it's something that anybody will fight against because because why would you go through all that stress to you know get get your credits and then you know get whatever um this and maybe be it a, a business location or land or whatever it is and then because maybe you know some, sometimes things happen you understand and then you may not be able to pay back so you will still try your best you know try to you know even, even form more deals with the, with the lender and everything just to make sure that you keep your collateral but sometimes they may not agree with that and then you know your collateral is taken um, in place. So that is why that is that is why credit worthiness is important. They have to look. They have to look at. Okay, this person. What does he have that I can take? If this person, if he cannot, you know, pay back my um, my my money. You understand. Also, I, I wanted to. I want to give an example, right? Of of sorry, lenders used to use as a lure to people to come to their bank, right? Let's use uh, there's this uh, uh what's it called company called Carbon right they give you credit to buy anything you want to buy at a at, at is this zero percent interest if i can if i can if, if i'm not mistaken for how many years then you have carry wise then you have piggy verse yeah piggy verse piggy exactly verse. thank you so piggy verse gives more uh, int- like less interest rates than carry wise and so people like to use piggy verse than carry wise you understand so carbon now they are using adverts on youtube on instagram and giving you to do whatever you want to do buy whatever you want to do abroad for zero percent credit for how many years and people are going to troop in that's something that people are going to troop in because it's it's cheap to borrow because so why exactly not? it's cheap to borrow like what i said the interest rates are low isn't it so yes. you know borrowing increases because it's less expensive yeah sikuda bank for example they said bank for the free but then their interest rate was actually low low when they came right and they give loans easily you understand the same thing with op2 loans are very easy to give that's why people used to rush to this financial uh, microfinance banks now exactly yeah now meanwhile like the much bigger banks who are more um strict more selective yeah they're more selective yeah yeah they, they they offer the the interest rates that they offer are much higher yes. so you know just anybody goes in so the risk management basically is there you understand yes. so now, they, they are giving loans to people who they absolutely trust can pay back one way or the other yes now right when that de- when that debt is paid right both assets and liability as we mentioned debt is an asset to the lender and debt is also a liability to the borrower right now when the debt is paid both is paid right both asset and liability are cleared and the transaction becomes complete right Ex- till that debt is paid that is when a transaction is complete and it is settled and it is finalized right so exactly. that is how credit works you understand exactly. so now why so, is credit important to the economy i want to explain that yeah. mm. now, right it's credit is very important to the economy because right when a borrower receives credit he or she increases his or her spending right remember yeah. remember earlier we said spending drives the economy right spending yes. drives the economy so whenever a borrower receives more received credit right from a lender he or she increases their spending power right so now one person's spending is another person's income let me explain how let yes. me repeat it one person's spending is another person's income so every money you spend somebody earned it and every money yeah. you earned somebody spent how you w- just imagine you went to buy you w- went to fifty thousand naira to buy a phone right you spent fifty thousand naira that person earned fifty thousand naira right so that's the, exactly the, that's exactly the amount you spend person earned right so that's the logic yes. so when you spend more someone else earns more 
that's how the economy more. works right and the then more, when they also earn more they will also spend more exactly. you understand they spend exactly. more on something if 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 an economy exists and nobody's spending anything in that economy nobody's buying nobody's selling that economy has stagnated you understand exactly. yeah. it's not an economy that is growing it's not an economy that is that that we can say is successful or recording successes you understand so if if uh, the reason why credit is important like you said you increase someone's spending power mm, let's yes. say i collected a mortgage to i collect a loan to buy a house as i bought the house a real estate agent has earned money a, a seller has earned money you understand those two people now can now go and spend money yeah. they let's say the real estate agent can say oh okay I, i've closed this deal i've made so much money i have to treat myself you go and buy a car yes you got a car. You've, you've bought a car the car dealer has earned money yes and, and that, guess what that, I... car dealer, that car dealer will go and look for something let's say maybe he maybe he's a gamer for example <laughs> he, he doesn't like spend his free his free time he goes he buys a, he buys the ps5 or something like that yes. the person that has made money you know so it is a cycle everything that's how money money moves yes, when you I, talk about I, it. I, I guess, money i guess what now that. to complete to complete that cycle right like as mm-hmm. you earn more as people spend more and you earn more right that increases your borrowing power it your increased yeah. income allows you yeah. to go and borrow it allows you to be credit worthy right and it allows mm-hmm. you to go and borrow which allows as you borrow more it allows increased spending because you borrowed you're going to go and spend more so which means spending is going to increase again so the cycle comes yeah. back again since the amount you spend is the amount someone earn if you spend more people will earn more and people that earn more are going to become credit worthy and they're going yes. to go to the banks and they're going to go and uh, what's it called um borrow more money and they're going to spend more, more money so the cycle continues and guess what yeah this is not just in one it's not just in one market this happens in every transaction this happens in every, every market, market whether it's phone laptop every single thing so in a nutshell right like those that is the basics of the economy right we have yeah. not talked about productivity growth yet we've not talked about short term debt cycle we've not, we've not yes. talked about long term debt cycle guess what we're going to talk about them in our part two of the economic machine right yeah yes thank you for the very very insightful <laughs> insightful explanations <laughs> that you've given us today and you see i was your sidekick yeah yeah of course i yeah, decided kick now you know i allowed it to do my do my other thing. <laughs> so thank you guys for listening for tuning in to today's episode look out for the next part of this this series next week sunday and you know have a have a very good day <laughs>